Welcome to my lecture online. Here's our first example of how to solve a second order circuit. Well, what we're only going to do at this point is find all the initial, the transient, and the final conditions of the circuit. So here we have a circuit with a 20 volt source, a resistor of 5 ohms, an inductor of 0.5 henrys, and then we have a branch, one branch with a resistor and a switch that will open at time equals zero, and a capacitor on the second branch of 0.2 farads. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to find, before the switch is opened, what the current is to the circuit and what the voltage is across the capacitor. Then, after the circuit opens up, the branch right here, the switch opens up, we're going to find the current and the voltage right after. As we will find, of course, they're exactly the same as what happened right before because since we have an inductor and a capacitor in the circuit, it takes time for them to react to a change. So therefore, we'll have the exact same current and voltage after the switch opens as we did before. But then during the transient period, we do want to find the current, which is going to be the capacitance times dVdt, and so we can then find dVdt on the capacitor, how fast the voltage is changing across the capacitor, and we want to find out how fast the current is changing through the inductor. Of course, we're going to need to find the voltage across the inductor by using the KVL methodology. So simply going around the circuit and adding up all the voltages. And at the end, when time approaches infinity, after the transient period is over, we want to find the current through the inductor and the voltage across the capacitor. So, before the switch opens, when the switch is closed, notice we have voltage going through the inductor through this resistor, through this resistor, and we assume then that the capacitor is fully charged, so there's no current flowing through the capacitor. Since the current is not expecting to change before the switch opens, there's no opposition to the current flow through the inductor, so basically we have a voltage and two resistors in the circuit. So the current before the switch opens is simply going to be I as and this is, of course, the symbol prior to the switch opening is going to be equal to the voltage from the source divided by the total resistance in the circuit, which in this case is going to be 20 volts divided by a total resistance of 8 ohms, which is going to be 2.5 amps. And the voltage across the capacitor, notice that we simply want to know the voltage from there to there, which means that we need to find the voltage here relative to the voltage drop across both resistors, which means that the voltage across the capacitor, so the circuit basically acts like a voltage divider, so the voltage across the capacitor at zero minus, right before the switch opens, is going to be the 20 volts, and I'm running out of room here, so let me get rid of that, so it's going to be equal to 20 volts times the resistor here, that's 3 ohms, divided by the total resistance of the circuit, which is 8 ohms, so 3 eighths of 20 volts, that's equal to 7.5 volts. Which means, before the switch opens, we have a current flow of 2.5 amps and 7.5 volts across the capacitor. So what will be the current flow after the switch opens? Well, momentarily after the switch opens, nothing really has changed. The current will still be 2.5 amps, and the voltage across the capacitor still will be 7.5 volts. The reason for that is that the inductor opposes a change in current, so as soon as we have a different situation, the current wants to change, but the inductor initially holds the change, and so instantaneously it cannot jump from one value to another. The inductor takes care of that. So next, we want to find the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time right after the switch closes, or in this case, right after the switch opens. It's defined as the current through the capacitor divided by the capacitance. So once we open the switch, there's no longer any current flow through this resistor. All the current has to flow through the capacitor, and the current right after the switch opens is exactly the same as the current before the switch opens. So therefore, the current will be equal to 2.5 amps divided by the capacitance, which is 0.2 farads, so that becomes equal to 12.5 volts per second. So that will be the rate of change of the voltage across capacitor per time. 
So now we want to calculate the rate of change of the current through the inductor with respect to time right after the switch opens. So to do that, we need to, use, we need to find the voltage across the inductor, so we need to add up all the voltages around the loop. So starting at this point right here, we jump across, that would be, uh, let's see here, uh, I'm going to put a little arrow on that because I don't want to make it an equation. So when I add up all the voltages, I end up with 20 volts minus the voltage drop across the resistor. That would be minus the current through the resistor times the resistance. The current would be 2.5 amps and the resistance will be 5 ohms minus the voltage drop across the inductor, which we don't know. We're trying to find out what that is. And then, well, notice that this will be positive, this will be negative, and minus the voltage drop across the capacitor, minus the voltage across the capacitor, which we now know is 7.5 volts. And that should all add up to zero, because once we add up all the voltages around the circuit, they should add up to zero. Now, here we have 20 volts, minus 12 and a half, minus 7.5, minus V sub L. But 20 minus 12 and a half minus 7 and a half is already zero. So that means from this we can conclude that the voltage across the inductor at that very moment is equal to zero volts. That of course makes sense because as we have a steady state current flowing through the circuit, when the switch was closed we had a steady state current through the circuit and if there's no change of current through the circuit the voltage drop across the inductor is zero. So at the moment we open the switch at that very moment nothing has changed yet so the voltage across the inductor should still equal zero. So we didn't really need to do this, but this just shows that our thinking is correct. Now that we have that, we can calculate the rate of change of the current with respect to time through the inductor. So this is equal to the voltage at that moment, which is 0 volts, divided by the inductor, which is 0 0.5 henrys, which means it is 0 volts per second at that moment. At that very moment, the voltage Whoa, whoa, that's not voltage. It's voltage divided by Henry's, which is actually current. So zero amps per second. That's what I wanted to write. So there's no current change through the inductor at the very moment that the switch is opened. But at that point, the current will begin to increase and you'll have some difference in the, um, in, you'll have something happening in the inductor once time continues to flow. But that is for the other part that's for actually solving the circuit which we're not going to do at this moment. The last thing we wanted to do is at steady state what is the current when time approaches infinity and what is the voltage as time approaches infinity. So the current will be through the inductor and the voltage will be across the capacitor. So let's first go to the capacitor. So here the switch is now open all the current has to flow through the outside loop and through the capacitor, the capacitor will begin to charge more and more and eventually the capacitor will reach the maximum voltage. So when there's no longer any current flow through the circuit, so there's no voltage drop here, and of course this is no longer part of the circuit, and of course no voltage drop there because the current stopped flowing, then the whole voltage drop will be across the capacitor and the capacitor will have a voltage of 20 volts across it, just like the voltage source. So we have a voltage rise and a voltage drop of 20 volts. Finally, we need to know the current through the inductor when time has gone quite a ways. So in other words, when we've reached steady state. And that means that if the capacitor is fully charged, it no longer allows any flow of current through there and the current through the inductor will have stopped. So at steady state, there will be zero amps of current through the inductor and there will be 20 volts of voltage across the capacitor. And so that's the key again to solving second order circuits. You want to go ahead and find the current and the voltage before the switch is open or closed, the current and voltage right after, the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitor and the rate of change of the current through the inductor. And then you want to find the final steady state current and voltage once you've done that, you're ready then to solve the differential equation and actually give the equations that describe the current and the voltage as a function of time throughout the transient period and after the transient period is over. And so that's how it's done.